So does jury selection actually influence jurors' decisions? Does it matter who you chose uh, from that previous set of images? In other words, is it possible to challenge jurors in such a way as to influence how the jury will decide a case? In some countries, such as the United States of America, there are actually profitable jury selection industries where professional consultants advise trial lawyers on how to select the most favourable jury for any particular case. In fact, in the USA, according to Lieberman and Sales 2007 research, trial consultants are used in almost all major litigation, and one of the services provided by those consultants is what is called scientific jury selection. As Lieberman sets out in his 2011 paper on scientific jury selection, the idea is to essentially use the scientific method, as we explained it at the opening of this course, to identify those jurors who will be positively disposed to the consultant's client and those jurors who will be negatively disposed. The assumption is that by using systematic research techniques, consultants should be better at predicting the attitudes of jurors than lawyers relying on their intuition and experience. So how do we know if they actually are better at doing this then? That is, how do we test that assumption that trial consultants might be more effective at selecting jurors? Well, testing this is actually more difficult than it seems at first. As Lieberman noted in 2011, looking at trial outcomes might not necessarily provide a good measure of the effectiveness of scientific jury selection. One reason is related to the cost of using trial consultants. Because of this expense, only those defendants who can afford the cost actually employ them. And those defendants are actually also more likely to hire top-tier legal representation. So it's difficult to know if we do actually observe better outcomes, whether those outcomes are due to the input of the trial consultants or the greater skill of the lawyers who've been hired. The approach uh, that about 30 years of research has taken, however, has been to rephrase the question somewhat. Rather than necessarily directly comparing the performance of consultants to lawyers' intuition, which would actually be very difficult, researchers have focused on whether individual juror characteristics are related to trial outcomes. The idea here is that if juror characteristics are related to trial outcomes and consultants are selecting jurors based on these uh, characteristics, then there should be some merit to scientific jury selection. So, does it work when we look at the uh, effect of individual juror characteristics? Well, possibly not. This is partly because in jurisdictions that allow potential jurors to be surveyed, up to 30% of jurors do not disclose all of the relevant information and questionnaires to design aid to aid selection. And so any attempt to influence the composition of the jury is often made based on partial information. Some research by Lloyd Bostock in 1988 also suggests that any individual juror biases are actually quite a minor influence on the verdict, because individual jurors themselves don't decide the verdict, but rather the jury as a group arrives at the verdict. We'll come back to the process of jury deliberation and what effect it has on decisions in a later video. Other research by Baldwin and McConville in 1979 looked at 500 cases in the United Kingdom. They found that no single social variable, such as age, gender or race, was actually associated with variation in the verdicts returned by jurors. In fact, the work of a number of researchers, including Diamond and colleagues in 1998 and Hastie and colleagues in 1983, suggests that any individual juror characteristics actually only accounts for about 2% of the variation in verdicts, and combined juror characteristics account for only 5% of the variation in verdicts. Fisher found in 1987 that if there is strong evidence against a defendant, jury composition actually doesn't matter at all. So the lack of a relationship between jury characteristics and verdicts, and the fact that jury composition doesn't appear to matter when the evidence is strong, both suggest quite clearly that influencing the composition of the jury doesn't appear to make much of a difference. Having said that jurors' individual differences probably don't matter, it's worth noting that according to Ellsworth's 1993 research, most cases actually start with an initial lack of agreement about the verdict when the jury takes its first ballot in the deliberation room. Given that all jurors actually hear the same evidence in the courtroom, this suggests that some individual differences must contribute to how they evaluate the evidence. So what might those juror characteristics be? Juror gender seems to matter in some cases, Hans and Vidmar's 1982 study suggests that female jurors 
were more likely to convict in cases involving allegations of rape. And Crowley and colleagues' 1994 study found a similar effect in child sexual abuse cases. Hans and Vidmar also found that older jurors were more likely to convict, as are jurors with higher educational qualifications. Dillahay and Nitzel's 1985 study found the same effect for jurors with previous jury experience. Baldwin and McConville showed in 1979, however, that the race of the jury doesn't seem to matter, with black defendants uh, unfortunately being more likely to be perversely convicted regardless of the racial composition of the jury. Now, in some jurisdictions, it's possible to ask about the attitudes of jurors, in particular their attitudes about the legal system in general and defendants as well. One such measure that was designed to assess these sorts of beliefs is the juror bias scale, which was developed by Casson and Reitzman in 1983. Measures like this one tend to be slightly better predictors of verdicts. For example, according to Leckie and Myers in 2009, the juror bias scale has been shown to typically explain about 15% of the variation in jurors' verdicts. Now, given the relative intrusiveness of questions asked in many of these types of uh, surveys, the opportunity to use them is actually often limited. So, while juror characteristics play only a small role in the verdicts that are returned, and thereby potentially limiting the effectiveness of attempts to select a favourable jury based on these characteristics, scientific jury selection actually makes use of a broader range of selection tools beyond just juror characteristics. Now, as Lieberman noted in 2011, it's actually very difficult to test these full range of techniques. So, perhaps it's fair to say, if you'll pardon the pun, that the jury is actually still out on the effectiveness of scientific jury selection. It's also fair to say that those more thorough uh, methods of jury selection are permitted in only a limited number of jurisdictions. And so, most attempts at selection will probably be based on visible jury characteristics, such as gender and age and so on. So if individual juror characteristics, at least the ones that can be easily identified, don't influence verdicts very much if at all, perhaps attempts to influence the composition of the jury are not going to be that effective. So what does influence jurors' verdicts? As we will discuss in the next couple of episodes, jurors are strongly influenced by the strength of the evidence against the defendant, as well as other factors outside of the evidence. Jury deliberation also plays a role in jurors' final verdicts and helps to resolve many of the initial differences of opinion that jurors may have. <laughs>